On this episode of Blending Bourbon, Dixon and I discuss building and maintaining relationships with distributors. Blending Bourbon is the podcast that takes you beyond the barrel and behind the scenes of the whiskey industry with master blenders Dixon Dedman and David Mark Young. Welcome back to another episode of Blending Bourbon. I'm Dixon Dedman, 2XO Whiskey. Joined as always by the most accomplished pigeon trainer in Omaha and master blender and owner of Golden Sheaf, David Mark Young, and our grand leader, producer, and um, kind of babysitter on the show, Myrden McHugh. Um, what's up? Cat herder extraordinaire. Hi, Dixon Deadman. Hi, Myron and McHugh. Hey, guys. How are you guys doing? It's uh, been quite the week. Quite the week so far. I, I just wanted on the record right now, as I look at myself, mm. um, I want everyone to know that I'm, I'm doing this podcast from a hotel room in Boston, and it's a beautiful sunny day in Boston, and I am kind of in a window because it's the only place with decent light, which is why I look like I've kind of got a little oompa loompa skin tone going and i don't have you look blonde amazing. highlights or anything like that so <laughs> i keep looking i'm just like i'm uh, you look good you look like you just walked off the beach after a photo shoot you... <laughs> uh, i said breakfast i the, love the frosted the... tips yeah no, no and you're smiling tips. and it's it like looks like a Snapchat filter. Yeah, yeah, it's all sparkly. I, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a window. I'm looking at it's beautiful <laughs> um, downtown, uh, like kind of a very historic part of Boston. Nice, um, very nice. Looking out on Copley Square, which is uh, this 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 cool little little area. Um, so yeah, that. But I I I I've never been in a tanning bed, and I. Don't have blonde highlights, There's although, no shame on that. It's, uh, it's okay. although the um, image on your screen may suggest otherwise. Now well, I'm, I'm we're switching uh, gears. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're talking now, about beauty tips and all the things. And, yeah, I got none. Yeah. <laughs> I can smell myself. I worked out this morning. Have breakfast. I need to shower. Um, nice. Uh, full week in Boston. Get to go home so tomorrow. It's, it's all good. Good, nice, Boston. So you're 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 eating lobster, lobster, Had hanging some out lobster, with lobster, lobster with wicked smart people on the East Coast. And uh, did you run into Ben Affleck or Matt Damon? Are those guys out there? Running yeah, we had dinner last think, night. Yeah. yeah, that was just just casual, something something easy. Cool, cool. Um, <laughs> so they're just i mean they're great guys, but God, they just want to talk, 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 and I just can't. I you know, I just wanted to get. They just event. talked about the Dixon Deadman movie. They want to. They want to just, you know. I mean, it's great. I think you know, they had great success. Have you seen Air? Air. Oh, oh you, um, I love that you introduced me to new things. I feel like I no, no. Crawl so it's it's basically the it's the time we get on here. It's the Phil Knight like Nike, uh, like getting Jordan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, okay. That so I watched that on an airplane. Not the, I can't remember good. where I was going last, but the, yeah, it's great. So you know they. They just kept wanting to, you know, talk about how they celebrated all that success, that movie with drinking two XO and Golden Sheaf, and and right. you know, they're just that's, that's they just want to call of, it liquid gold, yeah. And and they want that's so I I get so you just came you're fresh off the set makeup hair, it's lobster it's buffet. Be fun. I mean, I just, lobster. You know, I just, I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it just kind of as a friend. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, I, I, I told them they, you know, what they offered me. I was like, guys, you know, let's just, yeah, I have enough bourbon. We're good. Thanks right, for yeah. trying to trade, trade some bottles of Blanton's for my, Although yeah, my I, best I intro know, ever. I do, I do know that uh, if there were some a little some little trade, you are an avid shoe collector, so you may have been yeah. picked up some uh, Jordans on the side. You're like, I got the, I got the air, you know. Uh, I don't, I don't know shoes, so so I can't riff anymore. 
<laughs> so right Myerden, as the show's producer, I, I'm assuming that you're taking notes and we're probably going to have Michael Jordan on here in the future as well as Ben Affleck uh, and I, 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 I'm, Matt I'm, Damon. I'm working, <laughs> I'm working those angles constantly. Awesome. Look forward to that. That's great. We might as well eat some lobster too. Well, well, David, I know this past week you uh, are making some progress on the uh, tasting room. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're um, yeah. I'm, I'm like a like a I don't even know what you call a construction foreman. I've been popping in every day and and uh, stepping on nails and wearing a hard hat. <clears throat> it, yeah, we are making progress. Um, and no, I just pop in and see what's happening. And um, apparently, I'm the guy that likes to suggest things that aren't on the on the um, architecture diagrams. Like, hey. Can we put a window in there? Can we <laughs> can can we put a doorway here? Can we? They love that. They love that so much that that they um, yeah no they they don't so much. But but we are making progress. We're we were talking yesterday about opening. You know we're, we're going to be open as far as production wise. Be able to do some bottling, blending, that sort of thing. I'm I'm super excited about that. You know once we get liquor license in place and. And we're, um, you know, ready to roll out product. But then eventually, Labor Day is our target opening date for, okay, for cool. the public. Labor Day. Yeah. So that leads us into... He also uh, has a, a new mobile tasting room. Um, David oh, yeah. sent me a picture. He's he's wrapped his car in, <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, in, right. in Golden Sheaf. And basically, you can you can sign up and he will pick you up. And you get in the back seat, and like a murder you man. you drink Golden Sheaf until you throw up. At which point <laughs> he stops the car, and you have to get out. Um, <laughs> but it's a flat fee, and you you basically get in the back of his car, drink till you vomit, and then he goes and cleans it up and picks someone else up. And it's, it's kind of the new hot the thing Park. in in Omaha. Um, Can I show a picture? Can I show a picture? It's, yeah, oh, it's actually absolutely. pretty cool. It's the, um, yeah, check that bad boy out. Yeah. It's, I've it's, never puked in a nicer vehicle than, um, the so sheaf I, mobile. Yeah. I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, you should see the inside. The The outside looks amazing. The inside smells like better. vomit, but, um, <laughs> but the stories behind that, that's, that's, that's the, that's the gift right there. There's gotta be a Ted Lasso quote in there somewhere. Yeah, lots of great things happening. Very, very fortunate, grateful, happy, excited, overwhelmed, scared shitless. All the things. It's great. <laughs> so with the uh, so with the uh, opening venue coming up on Labor Day, we're going to have a spot where you can get Golden Sheaf whiskey right there in store. And plus... There are some woes of distribution. Let's get into that because I know that there are a lot. Because you having you having the storefront going to be able to be going to be able to sell uh, Golden Sheaf out of that. There, Dixon, you're currently running into some distribution issues right now uh, with Two uh, XO. I no, not. Not issues. I, you know, I think there that 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 is a whole nother part of this. I mean, we've talked at length about challenges and about, um, you know, and I, I don't, I just, you know, it's in terms of like the casual consumer, the collector, you know, managing distributors is is a is a Herculean task. Um, you know, you make you, you're, you know, you're a supplier, you're a producer. Um, but that, you know, the, the product that you make that you produce, um, is then sold to a distributor and it's that distributor's job, um, to get that product to both the on-prem and off-prem or retailer and restaurant accounts. And, that sounds really simple. Um, and you have different types of distributors. You've got the big national distributors, 
uh, Southern Glazers, um, Republic National, Breakthrough, uh, Johnson Brothers, but and, and you know they're 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 everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because while some of these are in twenty states or thirty states or forty states, um, and you can be aligned with them in all the states that they exist, because all state laws and state alcohol laws are different. They all actually have to operate as independent companies in each state. So we, you know, we're aligned with a couple um, across different states, and then in some states we're with 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 other houses. Um, the the sometimes the challenge is that you you know your distributor is fantastic. They do a great job of getting your product you know out and, and things like that. But they also have thousands of other products that they're selling thousands of other books. Um, you know, you usually have, uh, one, one person that, that handles your account, uh, or, or your, as that supplier, that supplier takes your information and shares it with the reps and the reps then take your product and sell it to, to their, uh, their accounts. But all of these reps have, um, you know, 15 different bourbons and 150 different or, 200 or 300 or 400 wines. And, you know, in some States, they also have all the seltzer business. They have all the vodka business, the gin business that, you know, and, and, and so, um, big portfolios, you know, a a big part of, of what I'm doing and and what, what we're trying, you know, to, to do is you really have to build, you have to build these relationships with your distributor. So when they go into their accounts, um, you want to be top of mind, uh, for them because, um, they've got, they've got incentives on 75 different products outside of just your product. Um, and, and, you know, and so I, mean, I was talking to a guy the other night and he's like, yeah, we're, you know, I'm sorry, you know, but we're, we're, we have this one big supplier, Pernod Ricard that, you know, it's, it's the end of their fiscal year and, and the challenge, you know, they've just laid down the gauntlet and it's, you know, it's been all hands on deck, uh, per no, per no, per no, per no, per no. And, you know, it's just, you want to, you want to say, Hey, I know, but I need you to be a little more 2XO, 2XO, 2XO. Um, and you know, that is just a, it, it's a, it's a, it's an ongoing, um, you know, kind of relationship building, thing and and um it's it's a part of of the the you know what we do that you know is is not near as much fun as blending something or going to some event doing a bottle signing or tasting or or whatever um but it's you know that is that relationship building part of it because they are your vehicle uh, but they are a bunch of other people's vehicle. And a lot of times they, you know, the bigger companies can incentivize more, they require more attention. And, you know, so it, it, you know, that's, that's a lot of what um, it, that relationship part and that relationship piece and, and, and that educational piece um, is, <clears throat> takes a lot of time. And, and what, what, and I know the answer to this, but but why is that important? I mean, what what are what are you trying to get them to do? I, you know, I get two xo two xo two xo, but but what is it that you know? Ultimately, it's sales, right? But what's the in between? You know, them. Yeah, well, I mean, and, look, if 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 they don't, you know, they they pick up your product, right? The, so so the, our distributor in in here in in Massachusetts, you know, they 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 we allocated them x number of cases, and they take them in. Um, but the last thing you want is, you know, I don't want, I don't want my cases sitting in the distributor warehouse. I want them moving to the retail level and, and to the consumer level and the, mm-hmm. there's a consumer demand. Um, retailers, generally speaking, are business people. They just want things that are going to sell. You know, they, they you know, every, in, at the retail level, you think about your liquor store as, you know, every bottle on every shelf is paying rent. Right. And you know, if that bottle's not moving, it's not paying rent. Right. Um, you know, so it's, it's, how do you, how do you get your distributor 
to go to the retail level and say, Hey, we've got this great opportunity for you. This is a great product. This is new. This, you know, and right. half the time with our stuff, the retailer is like, yeah, I've been waiting on it. You know, when can I get it? Which is a great thing. But, um, you know, you want to be all of those reps that, that, that have, have routes that they run weekly, the accounts that, that, that buy from them. Um, you know, you want, you want them out there cause they're kind of your frontline ambassador to, your your on prem and off prem, um, yeah. The you know, I mean that that's that's how you get. It I, I can't I can't go to every liquor store, and 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 be the you know and and sell my product, right across right. the country and and so you have to build the because that's that's at the end of the day that's who's selling your product is your distribution representative, right right. Yeah, and there's that there's a cost associated with that. So, you know, the the big picture, you know, as the producer, we're producing products and we're not just putting, you know, we we recommend a uh retail price, suggest a retail price. Can't control pricing, but but then there's multiple layers in between that retail price and what you sell it to the distributor for. So, you're selling it to them, you know, there's legally, it's got to touch their warehouse floor before it goes out to retail or on premise account. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's not just, Hey, we made this here. You want to buy it. And so you're, you know, I mean, we're, we're not just marketing selling to the consumer. I mean, we're selling to the distributor and the, in the retailer, the last thing you want to happen is for your product to go into the warehouse and sit on the warehouse floor and not sell, collect us. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. So <clears throat> your, both of your guys' uh, approach are probably uniquely um, different. Dixon having already a established namesake and uh, you know he's got 2xo dixon deadman's doing this you know formerly kentucky owl uh so your name's already out there so we know that there's going to be people knowing you're knowing you as ambassador blender already established know that there's going to be some demand um for for your new stuff so david you coming into this establishing a namesake on your own how i'm sure that you're you probably have a have to have a more unique approach to establishing um relationships with uh distributors and on the storefront so you're probably a more got to have a lot more time face to face right yeah, or, or, exactly. or i mean FaceTime. or am i way off on that oh, i'll take this on. one alex yeah um <laughs> You know, when, 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 and I think we talked about this before, um, you know, when David first called me, what, two, three years ago, you know, we, you know, <laughs> one of the things that, you know, he was like, well, you know, he's talking about where he was going and how he's going to do this. And, and, you know, one of the things that I, I suggested right or wrong, um, but, you know, when, and I, when I told David, I was like, you know, you've got this this, this, this heritage, uh, brand that is very Nebraska centric, uh, that is, um, you know, something that, that Omaha folks and, and Nebraska people are going to be proud of and want to get behind. And, and, you know, I, I said, you know, own, own your backyard first, um, own, you know, don't, uh, you know, it, there's, it, to, to start a brand and go to say Kentucky and, and try to, to talk a bunch of Kentucky bourbon drinkers into trying something that is, uh, very historically, you know, relevant in Omaha, um, you know, would be, would be a challenge own, own Omaha, own Nebraska, be, you know, and, and then parlay that success into, uh, moving into other, other markets, um, and, and, and show, you know, a proof of concept in your backyard, take a very rifle approach as opposed to a shotgun approach. Right. 
And, and I think that's, that's why you have seen, you know, such great success is because you've, you've stayed very focused on, you know, one kind of geographic area where people can, and, and, and now, um, as you start to, um, you know, kind of socialize the brand and, in, in, in circles outside of Omaha, um, you're starting to see a lot more traction because, you know, you've, you've got this, this base, uh, in, in Nebraska to, to build on. Right. Yeah. Win the backyard, win the backyard. That, I mean, that still echoes in my head from our first, you know, I mean, we talk about that every, every once in a while and it's, and I do have to remind myself of that regularly because it is, you know, we, we win an accolade or, you know, we get a request, you know, a guy called me the other day from Seattle, Washington. He's like, Hey, I'm passing through. Can I, you know, heard about your stuff and you can um, your back, back of your car. Can, can you take me for a ride? And, um, so yeah, as enticing as that is, and, and we are, we're, we're, we're at that scaling point. However, it's still important to maintain, you know, sustain our presence and continue to grow our presence here in the backyard. Um, you know, talking with other brands that, you know, I've, I've seen, I've seen it go both ways where, okay, they, think that they've achieved the backyard and then they scale outward, you know, become nationally established. And then, um, one of, one of the biggest downfalls I've seen is where you can't sustain what you've established. And then, you know, it's like the game of risk You're you're conquering territories, but the minute you go to another territory, there's nothing going on in the backyard and you've, you know, you've not, scaled out enough to where you can continue to sustain that and you lose your momentum in the backyard. And then, you know, perceivably you've become too good for your own backyard. And, you know, that's, that's never something you want to do. You want to be able to sustain where you continue to sprawl. And, uh, so that's, that's always important, you know, maintain those relationships, you know, having boots on the ground and being able to communicate and meet their needs, not just your own. Yes. So, as Dixon, you, you mentioned before, of of uh, some of the bigger brands are able to incentivize their distributors a little bit more. What ways can the smaller or smaller, more uh, kind of like uh, grassroots operations? What ways are you able to uh, get your name to the top of the list? Is it through working with your marketing team on promoting promotions with the distributor, getting more out there, more FaceTime? Uh, David just did the, uh, money, uh, <laughs> my, uh it's rubbed his finger to money more talk. money. So like what, yeah. how do you do that? I, I, you know, I think for me and, and, and now the fortunate thing for me is it's the part that I enjoy, right? Um, if, if you, you know, building demand at the consumer level, um, is is paramount obviously uh but you know a lot of times these retailers i mean it blows my mind how many retailers that i will go to to visit and they want to hear the story uh and they're excited they've got customers that that have been asking for it they're begging for it they want more of it that you know they're it's one bottle per uh, and then it's like, well, I'd love to kind of sample you on, on what's coming next and, and what, what I've got and what this is. And they're like, ah, I don't drink, you know, oh, I don't, you know, and it, so, I mean, the, 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 you have to, you know, you, a lot of times, again, the retailers are in business and, and it's, it's no different than, um, I mean, they're, they're, they are selling a product and oftentimes they don't know much about the product they don't care much about the product they know that you know tito's makes them money uh wild turkey makes them money right. um yeah. and so you know it's it's very important one one way that that we uh attempt to kind of provide something unique because we can't throw the money at stuff like these massive brands can is um is 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 kind of being pre for me is being present uh in in the consumer circles it's you know we did an event last night um 
you know, with, with 60 to 70 people from a local bourbon society. And so you go and, and, and it's, it's, it's not, we're not sending some brand rep who's wearing a, a, you know, a polo shirt, who's regurgitating, you know, what they've been trained. It's, it's me. And I, you know, and, and it's, it's, Whatever you want to ask me, you ask me. Let's talk about it. I'll tell you all the stupid stories I've got. Um, you know, we'll let's 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 have let's let's have a pour together. Let's you know, and 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 I think that's you know, I I'm 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 solely focused on educating the distributor and 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 activating with the consumer. Um, and, and that's, you know, that, that's, I think that's, that's how I can compete. And I don't even say compete. It's not like we're trying to knock off bullet or Turkey one oh one or whatever, but, um, but, you know, being, you know, like being a, a, a brand that, um, it has a, has like a real person attached to it, has a real face attached to it, has a real story attached to it. Like it's a, you know, like when people say, Hey, remember I met you, you know, whenever. And, uh, you know, just like that, that is hugely important because I can't, you know, we can't go to these distributor reps and say, we'll give you 50 bucks for every case placement you get. We don't have those kinds of, we don't have those kinds of funds. Other brands can, can do that. They can go and they can say, Hey, you know, um, I mean, they, they can monetarily incentivize in ways that, that, that I, I can't do it. So I've got to go activate, um, at the consumer level and, and create, you know, uh, relationships that people, uh, so, so they, they, so the demand comes from the bottom up instead mm-hmm. of relying on the distributor salespeople to go and move the product for me when they've got 15 other bourbons that, that they can move with monetary incentives that I can't offer. And you, you have multiple distributors, right? I mean, you have your, your primary. Oh yeah. I mean, we, Johnson you know, brothers, but, but I mean, you, well, you but Johnson are, brothers is in like 16 States. So, right. and, so and beyond so, that. Yeah. But I mean, we're, we're with the, you know, the pretty much the, the largest player in every state is, is who we're, we're with. Right. Which is a great thing because they have, you know, this, this massive presence. They also have a huge book to sell. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm assuming, you know, as you, you go on these trips and I, I want to ask this, um, but you, you go on these trips. So, you, you know, Minnesota, Florida, California, you've had, you know, multiple, been in multiple States recently. And oh my gosh, so they're planning my travel for the rest of the year. And I'm just getting anxiety every time we talk about it. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> but looking back on that, like California, for example, you know, that was probably what month and a half ago. Um, do you, I'm assuming you guys are looking back at, okay, what's the impact of, you know, Dixon Deadman being boots on the ground, you know, being the face. Well, it's of it's huge. It is huge. It's exactly, right. you know, and, 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 you know, when you, you know, you get, you get home and immediately it's like, well, this is what we like to do next time. This is this, you right. know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing. And, uh, and I, I, I love it. I love, um, you know, I, I, I love the, the, the travel part of it. It's, it's hard. We talked about it, you know, it's hard. Sometimes you need to go home and kind of chill, but it's, it's, it's the only, I mean, I, I yeah, you've seen some brands have success because they just pour tons of money into social media or they hire or give a piece of equity to some celebrity so they can, you know, whatever. But, yeah. um, you know, I, the only way I, I, I know to do it, uh, is, is to, to actually be the one doing it and not paying some 25 year old kid to hop around and try to tell a story that is my story. Right. Um, man, I see that all the time it, it, to be the face and the name versus a, a rep that's, there for the face and the name is huge to, to be able to, I mean, people love that. That that's, that's uh, yeah, it's, it's too bad. There can't be 50 Dicks and Deadmans, you know, one in every state doing what you do. 
but that's what sells. I mean, being there, that, that personable, um, you know, it goes back to like, like this, this podcast, for example, being transparent and vulnerable and, um, something that people can relate to. I think that that's really huge. That, that really is attractive to the consumer. I mean, and, and, yeah, as a and consumer it doesn't myself. suck. I mean, I eat good and I drink good and, you know, it's fun. I mean, it's oh, not, sure. it's you know, exhausting. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, there's an ROI on it, but, um, it's, it's a lot of work. It's, it's like, I don't think it would be near as much fun if I was selling trash bags or something like that. I mean, you know, sure. that's, that's an interesting concept, but yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, that's just it, you know, I mean, you know, with this, this podcast is great because it's, it's, you know, both a therapy session, but just the reality of what's happening behind the scenes. You know, you know, what's interesting, what I find very interesting is I, I have had more and more conversations about these conversations because of the podcast it, and mired in, you know, I, I don't know if you know this stuff off the top of your head, but I, you know, our, we've talked about our analytics and the numbers increasing you know our followers um which is which is amazing you know very grateful for that um but there's more and more talk i did a podcast yesterday with uh um uh, a guy named sean lee here in nebraska sips and tips podcast which will come out next month and um and we talked about this podcast gosh all they wanted to talk about was dixon actually they um (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> but but it, the podcast has become the primary topic of conversation for me. Not not by choice, but people ask about it all the time, I, and I love it. It's great. Yeah, and in the fact that because because I, I know going back to the boots on the ground and owning your own home, your home market, like like I'm seeing David's posts, and I'm like like I've been to one. Um, one tasting that you had, and that like, uh, what what was the what was the special blend that you put together for the local venues around here? Uh, I can't. Uh, yeah, that was the head. um, the nine year, um, uh, finished in maple syrup cask. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, uh, like, and that man was that 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 was good. That was also the first time I tried your tried your rye. And I was like, okay. I was blown away by it, but I, I'm constantly seeing. So that was the first time. And so far, the only time I've been able to get out to it because, because David, it's working these, working these streets like a madman, <laughs> like a madman. Oh yeah, cause, Cause it's like, and you're like, I've seen partnerships with, uh, well, not so much partnerships, but set up a booth here at walled wall, high V. I know you had that, uh, that, uh, promotion, um, uh, about a month ago with uh, High V, so like having that localized presence, um, and actively working with your distributors and building those accounts has got to be pretty impactful. And having those conversations, it's just like, well, I had this fantastic conversation about the uh, about uh, uh, this episode of the podcast that I heard. That's that's got to really help continue to establish that brand. How how have you seen any? Um, how much value have you gained from that? Oh man, tons and tons. Um, because they, they lead to other opportunities and then, you know, with them as well as others, you know, they see, oh, there's a collaboration there and we want to do similar. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm literally doing two a days, pretty much five days a week, six days a week, you know, with, you know, an event or two on the weekend as well. And, um, so yeah, those those partnerships are amazing because they are they become brand ambassadors. You know, it's a two way street. I support them, bring people into their uh, venues, you know, it, with interest in Golden Chief and you know selling our products. But also, you know, one thing I love to do is to be on site with it, and I love this too. Like these get these glasses. You know, people. This is wall to wall here and. Um, they're not, not a big box store, but they're, they're, uh, you know, like warehouse kind of retailer. Um, it's just a, a massive liquor store. And so we've got an event there tonight. Um, That's at a uh, 132nd and center, right? 132nd center. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and they, so. um, we'll, we'll be there with the golden sheaf mobile, uh, first event. And 
<laughs> I'm excited about that. <laughs> Not giving away a, rides tonight. If you need a ride but, home. <laughs> if you need a ride home. But the thing I love about it is I'm not I'm not there. It, I, I mean, I'm there to, to represent Golden Sheep, you know, talk about the brand and, and spread that good word. But but what I love to do is I pop into stores all the time and people will ask questions. Hey, I've, I've got a brother. He's turning 40 and what do you recommend? I'm in this price range. You know, what, what, what would you suggest? And I love that. So, so I, I love going into a retail store and, and supporting them, you know, Hey, well, I recommend golden sheaf. Okay. Not the right price point. Cool. Well, here's my top three and, and, you know, watch them take it to the counter sell. And then, you know, the smile on the, the owner's face is, you know, I'm, I'm helping them sell product other than our, our product. Uh, that makes me happy. I like, I like supporting our our people that support us. You know that that should be a two way street. Well, it's a it's a, it's probably you could probably start being able to differentiate um, uh, people that knew you before uh, the, the podcast and currently uh, with the podcast of uh, hey th- hey David David Young uh, what's going on and then you got your podcast fans or it, it's David Mark Young right there <laughs> right. <laughs> That's my brand name. I, 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 I you know, that's intentional. I, I am trying to brand myself. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, true story, right? I, I, I want people to recognize that, you know, we're involved in this, you know, we make good whiskey. And so when we, it's, it's marketing strategy, when we put brand, when we put bottles out, you know, we've got a history of success. It's got to be so good because to... that guy has three names. It's got to be good. He's got. <laughs> well, it always, it always well, seems, and... it always seems that a lot of like the most successful <laughs> like authors out there, uh, artists out there, uh, even blenders out there, uh, distillers always have some sort of form of. You got C.S. Lewis, J.R.R. Tolkien, <laughs> D.M.Y. Uh, David Mark Young. D.M.Y. I, I do love my name. I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. My parents, um, uh, I, I do, I do. I, I, I this I'm, is I'm, I'm off proud the effing that. rails. It is. Oh. It is. Hey, yeah, well, let's keep, keep going down the rail. No, let's, let's get back on topic. More yeah, well, Come on. I mean, heard that, these cats. That, that, that was, that was, that, that is still <laughs> associated with the, uh, uh, building up. It's still part of building a brand and getting this distribution out there. Uh, sure. He's distributing, um, uh, being able to associate your name with the uh, with the capabilities of that distribution. So um, I had a um, this, you know, I think one of the things you were talking about, which is really special, is 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 in these events and in these things, like going, and, and part of it is, you know, you can do this. Like, I, I if I had a, a, a little. Um, you know, if we had these brand reps, we sent around, like they've, they've got to go, they've got to do X, Y, and Z. We, we set them up, train them, you know, when, when a bullet rep goes and does a tasting, they're tasting through the rye and the bourbon and the 10 year old bourbon and the barrel, you know, the, the foolproof bourbon, whatever it is. And like, that's, that's it. And, and what I think, you know, people oftentimes gravitate to additionally, it's just what you said when you, you know, you, you made a special blend and you took it to, um, you know, to something. And it's like, yeah, they came here expecting this and they left here. They left with that plus this other experience that, that right. you, you know, you, and, and, you know, I think I went, we, I did an event in Springfield, Massachusetts, um, a couple nights ago. And it's this amazing store called Table and Vine. Big, big. Um, and, and they've got this phenomenal, um, tasting room and, and sold tickets. And, and there were like 30 people there, um, sold out in like 20 minutes. This is housekeeping, trying to get in and clean my room. Um, trying to flip your pillows. but, um, I'm just going to knock. Yeah. But anyway, we do, we do this event and it, and it was great. And it was I, a lot of, you know, I mean, they were so excited. I, they said it's the fastest um, an event has ever sold out that they had, wow. and, and it was just, it was innkeepers. It was, you know, and it was just, uh, talking about that, but I, 
recently uh, started to kind of finalize what I'm going to do with our American Oak version of the the Oak series, which is going to be kind of the the core flagship brand of 2XO, the always available, always on the shelf, forty nine ninety nine. And I had this blend together and I had just kind of fallen in love with it. And I had, you know, I was really excited about it. Um, I'd shared it with two of my partners um, who were very excited about it, but um, you know, I thought this would be great. Let's, let's go up there. Um, so after, as we got to the close of the event and they're like, well, if you don't have it, you know, if there are no more questions. And I was like, well, I got, I got one other thing. If anybody, you know, is opposed to it. I understand, but I, I do have this bottle over here. I'd like to like to have, you know, your, your thoughts on. And, and so I shared that and, you know, and, and the first thing that, you know, I got with these people, you know, it's just like, Oh my gosh. So no one has ever tried this before. It's like, no, no one. I mean, maybe four people have tried this right. before. Right. And, and it's, it's a little bit, I was a little nervous. I mean, I, I love it. I was a bit, I'm a huge fan of it. It's dangerous. I can't keep it near me. I, you know, I, but, um, and, and, and the response was incredible. I mean, I had a, there was like three ounces left in a bottle. It didn't even have a label on it. It was just a shiner, you know, whatever. <laughs> and this, this guy, he offered me a hundred bucks. <laughs> Um, and I was ask. like, in three months, you can buy this for forty nine ninety nine, and it's a full bottle. Right. And he was like, I right. want that one. And I was like, take it here. It's yours. <laughs> um, but you know, these people, you know, it, it's, that's, so that, that's like, to me, you know, that, yes, yes. Have I spent a lot of time with these distributors and reps and talking about what this is and what's coming and what it's going to be and how it's different and, you know, whatever. Absolutely. Is that important? Absolutely. But sharing it with those 30 people, uh, their response, uh, the way they're, you know, and, and I did the same thing last night at a, at an event where I, one of the, I, I brought a sample of the single barrel we're going to release. And so after, you know, we, we had all these people waiting and we got through that stuff and I was like, well, why don't y'all stick around? I got something I want to, you know, and, and all of us, you know, and, and never, it, it's just, that's how you, you know, you, you're, you're kind of creating a, um, a buzz around a product, but it's also yeah. like, it's just a different experience for, for the, for the consumer than just your standard. This is our high rye bourbon and it is bottled at 94 proof aged approximately six and a half years. And, you know, you like, could buy nah. it here, here and here. Yeah. yeah. Plus, plus, uh, like you get immediate gratification of of seeing someone enjoying something that you made. Right. Like that's like that's the biggest takeaway that I've ever had ever had. Um, and I'm sure David, the same for you. Like, like uh, I I when I gave my feedback on on the rye and and the uh, that uh, maple maple uh, finish, like. I, like I was, and I was excited to give it too. Like, uh, oh, yeah. but that's always been the best form of of uh, satisfaction is seeing someone enjoying right there on the spot. Um, yeah, I mean, and, 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 sure, and sure, consumer. sure. The sure the numbers coming in of sales probably is, is sure. a is a is a good uh, quantifier. But I don't. I think I think just having someone looking in your face and you see that see that love for what you made is the oh, biggest yeah. payoff. Yeah, and that kind of insider tip there, you know, I, I do it all the time. I carry these you know bottles around me somewhere and and the moment always presents itself. I'm like, oh wait, um yeah, oh, oh, here you go. Yeah, here, you know, let's try this. This is the most current blend or um and to share that with people and it did it, it does. It creates a buzz and um and then you also get feedback. I love feedback. I mean, I'm a huge fan of feedback. Good, bad, or indifferent. Give me the feedback. If it sucks, I want to know it sucks. And I'd prefer to know that it sucks before we bottle the entire, you know, batch and put it on the show. So, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good talk, guys. And we'll see you all next week. Cheers. Cheers, y'all. Like, share, comment, 
all the things. Thanks for following. We appreciate you guys. We want, want your feedback because we love feedback. Cheers, everybody.